The Flyers win it again. Eight consecutive games with a point, and what a wild finish this was. This took years off my life. I think everybody's life, Al. Yeah, that's, it really was at the end. It's like you had to hold your breath. They had several chances at Anderson, although I thought they played great defense throughout the goaltender at the end, and risked the line and blocking shots was just fabulous. He was on the ice almost half of that last yeah. minute, but uh, in due course, right? The blocking shots, getting in passing lanes. Uh, Risto was, uh, other than Anderson, probably the player of the game for me. Yeah, you watched that last couple of seconds and he's, his entire body is basically <laughs> lying in front of the goal like sacrificing just, himself <laughs> just stack them all up and can't <laughs> score if you can't see the net yeah and, and he's he, a pretty he, tall guy so it works he had big hits throughout the game yeah. too really big hits so you know with your top guy out him moving up really was an impressive outing yes it was welcome in the Flyers post game live presented by Curado Insurance. The Flyers, they win by a goal. It was all they needed was that goal in the first period. It was an absolute solid defensive performance. And Scott, what's most impressive is Travis Sanheim was out this game. We don't know how much of a heads up they even got. He's out with an illness. Cam York, Rasmus Sterlinen held their own. Next man up and, and always be ready. You never know when you're going to get that call if it was at 4 o'clock in the afternoon uh, or this morning, right? Uh, so, so guys are ready to play. Guys come in and uh, play different min minutes, different partners. Uh, Risto did a heck of a job there with Cam York, and yeah, we talked about him just blocking shots, uh, being physical, uh, even took a stick to a guy's head there. Uh, uh, yeah. Fabry there in the third period didn't get called on it, but just just a great effort by everybody. It was a great effort, and it's not it's not like short term right now. The defense, the, the defensive style of play, the Flyers are playing right now, and it's really. It's gone throughout the team. When you can miss a Sandheim, as we've mentioned, everybody's chipping in defensively. You kind of get a shell, get in front of the goaltenders. So it's now, I think, more than just Philadelphia taking notice that this can be a tough group to crack through. And doesn't it seem like, you know, years past, you kind of got nervous? I, yeah. I felt more comfortable uh, with that one, one goal lead going in the last mm -hmm. few minutes. They pulled the goalie at three minutes to go. Uh, like you said, with, with Kane out there, why not? But how... how good as that say this team is yeah it's like you feel the confidence in front there just that something's not going to get through that big mistake not going to be made more importantly the turnover yeah. it's what killed them in past seasons you'd see just when they're about to win a game or get a game into overtime when it would be a, a bad turnover go the other way and and they've kind of erased a lot of that in their game right now and then if it happens they've got a great eraser in either goalie yeah. Yeah, absolutely and that leads, leads us to yingling presents logger up sam airson once again what a performance by him 34 saves. That's the second most in his career. That's now the third straight game. He's had to start, and he's been lights out, Scott. Yeah, it, it's once you get games and more games on your belt, you, you feel better about your game, yourself, uh, you know, the guys, you know, defensemen especially, uh, you know, when he's out there, you know, where to play the, the shots, the, the, the defensemen shoot the pucks in. Do you want to get in front? Do you want to let them see it? Do, uh, you just kind of get more comfortable, uh, you know, in that kind of goaltender, defenseman, player uh, scenario. So, he, uh, he, listen, when he's out there, it's just it's very calming out there. Carter Hart as well. I'm not uh, you know picking on him, but right now it's been the, it's been the Erson show the last few games, and he's been unreal. Yeah, as much as we mentioned Sandheim out with Hart out, now this guy has to stand up. And what I really like, Scott, is going side to side where he sealed off the post so well. Uh, when Detroit kind of rushed in, they got some stuff around the paint, and he was right there to seal everything off. Yeah, not to, not, but there might have been a couple second chances, but no third, fourth chances because he either covered it or the players did a good job of moving the puck away from the net. Yeah, and think about how much different this past month could have been if Sam Harrison wasn't playing up to the standard he'd set for himself. Carter Hart now has missed three starts due to that illness we talked about. And think about if you don't have a backup goaltender like you have. The Flyers are on this great run. There's so much momentum. Totally different story if the backup goaltender can't come in and do what he does. Yeah, a lot of teams for me have a, a 1A and then they have a, you know, maybe a 2C two, two or a yeah. 3. You know, it, it's, it's almost feeling more comfortable. It's a 1A, 1B scenario. So, uh, you know, hats off to the, the scouting staff that scouted this guy as a kid. Uh, you know, kind of grooming him last couple of years in Lehigh and, uh, you know, showed some brilliance last year. And now he's getting a chance to be a, um, an everyday NHLer when Carter's been out. Yeah, and this is, uh, you know, you look at what they've done now through the eight games, of, actually since early November. And this, mind you, is without a power play, basically. And penalty kill that is ridiculously good. I mean, when you, I mean, it's just automatic right now. Uh, when, they get, when they get down a man, not only that they shut the other team up, they're getting that chances. It's almost like they're licking their chops. Yeah, right? really. Instead of a power play where it's almost kind of deflates the team, when the Big PK, time. it's like the, the four guys going out there, you know, whether it's Coots and, and TK starting it, uh, uh, they're just like, hey, we're, we're going to block a shot and we're going. So it, it's exciting to watch. Yeah, it kind of fits the underdog mentality that we're seeing right now with the Flyers and Sam Ayrson right now playing absolutely lifestyle. This is his third straight game that he has started. Let's hear from him now with JJ and Boosh. 
Thank you, Ashton. You're looking at Sam Harrison, who was absolutely spectacular in this one. 34 saves, including 16 in the third period. Sam, congratulations on the win and the shutout. And this was a game where, you know, for a while you weren't seeing a lot of pucks, and then all of a sudden you get a flurry. And then, of course, in the third, as they made their push, you saw a lot of them. But a lot of the shots from the outside with a lot of traffic around you, how important is the focus there, being able to see those pucks somehow through all of what's going on around you? I mean, uh, obviously we're doing a great job keeping them uh, to the outside and the way the, the game kind of uh, develops with us being up by one and uh, they're trying to push, they're just throwing pucks a little bit from, from everywhere, but uh, I'm getting great support seeing the puck and also uh, if there's any rebounds, uh, our guys are there to clear them out. Sam, early in the year, uh, the time in between starts, uh, particularly from training camp to your first start in Dallas, was quite a bit of time. Very difficult to handle. Now you've gotten three consecutive starts. Uh, can you explain in your words uh, how it helps you uh, to find your game because you look awfully sharp nowadays? Uh, I think, uh, obviously, yeah, I get into a little bit more of a flow and I felt my confidence has uh, been growing as uh, I've been playing more and just uh, kind of getting used to the uh, the pace of the league and, uh, and the skill players. But... Uh, at the same time, it's it's kind of my job to. Uh, I got to be ready. If if I don't play for a while, it's it's up to me to uh, stay sharp. Uh, I mean, it's I don't decide when I play. It's uh, but I got to be ready every time my uh, name is uh, called upon. Yeah, you certainly have been ready, Sam. How about the team? Uh, I know on the outside, the fans, media starting to to get involved and say, "Hey, this team's a playoff uh, contender now." But I got the feeling you guys, as players, kind of felt that right from the get go. Yeah, we have a lot of confidence in uh, in our group and uh, and uh, what we're uh, able to uh, to do as a team. But I think uh, as well, uh, we talked before the game, just staying uh, kind of in the moment, breaking the season down here, and taking the next couple games here before Christmas as a uh, as a focus, focus uh, on these games, get through, uh, and and not look too far ahead. All right. Well, Sam, congrats again on the shutout and the win. Thanks for taking time out to talk with us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sam Harrison, J.J. Ambush, and you hear Sam Harrison right there. Now you have to wonder, Carter Hart tells us at Morning Skate he's feeling better. He's not expected to miss any more starts. Now you have to wonder, you got to get Sam Harrison more starts with the way he's playing, right? He's yeah. earned it. Yeah, he has earned it. He's, he's played great. Uh, you know, Carter's obviously your number one. Uh, but the one thing I liked about what Sam said there was was the work when he's not playing a lot. Him and Kim Dillabo, they do a heck of a job after practice, before practice, uh, you know, working on the skills for the forwards, but also for the D to, to stay sharp. And uh, there's been, you know, 8, 10, 12 days in between a couple of his starts this season. And, and for a backup goaler, it might be a little bit rusty, but he's, he's looked sharp now. He's got a few games in a row. Yeah, two goalies to practice helps, you know, get some work going. And like, I like the fact they break it down now going into Christmas. To me, it's, it's, they're, it's the coaching staff telling them, you know, don't look too far ahead here. We're playing really it's well. It's easy to. <laughs> and you know with torts, you know, going into Christmas means nothing. It's like you know, <laughs> those practices just before can be, can be nasty. So let's keep our attention. Let's keep that attention here and keep it going right until the break. Yeah, there won't be a big-time Christmas break with Christmas cookies and all the good <laughs> stuff there with John Tortorella. All right, sticking with Sam Harrison, let's now go to the crossover, sending it back up to the broadcast booth with J.J. and Boosh. And, guys, we just were talking about Sam Harrison, and you have to wonder how you're going to get more starts for him. But we were just talking about how different this past month could have looked with Carter Hart dealing with this illness, missing three starts. If Sam Harrison doesn't play up to par, we're not joking about the playoffs and talking about this Christmas break. It would have totally changed the trajectory of the season. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. You talk about what a backup goalie can bring to a team. It's being ready, and uh, Sam has been ready. Uh, Carter dealing with some health issues sporadically here over the last month or so, and, and Sam's been there. And, you know, it was that rough start that, that Bush alluded to in the interview with Sam where he wasn't playing but once every two weeks or so. Torts had gotten into a rhythm, even with Carter healthy, where he was getting Sam a start a week, and that's probably where he'll settle in uh, should Carter stay healthy the rest of the year. It's good to have two really quality goaltenders. You need it in today's NHL. Yeah. I mean, uh, the day of the starter playing 62 to 65 games maybe one or two guys can do that in this NHL you need both guys to play and you need both to yeah, give you confidence when they when they go out there that they can make those timely saves and and Erson is proving that he can do it I mean there is a calmness to his game when you watch him 
you get a good feeling knowing that you know he's gonna he's gonna be back there and not get panicked in certain situations and uh, get over aggressive when not need be. Uh, he he's he's gaining the confidence of not only uh, his teammates, the coaching staff, but I think the fans are starting to see it too that this guy's a quality goaltender, and the more he plays, the more confident he gets. No offense to Sam Erickson and to you, Brian Boucher, but uh, I want to say the player of the game for me was Rasmus Ristolainen. With some elevated minutes tonight, he was all over the ice, uh, getting some shots on, using his physicality, blocking shots at the end, uh, his security blanket in front of Sam Erickson. So talk about uh, Risto a little bit and uh, how he's kind of uh, stepped up tonight in, in a huge uh, responsibility with him. It's a great point, Hartsy. And by the way, I'm not offended uh, at <laughs> you all. Am I. I mean, I'm not, not offended I'm not, at all. I'm not pro goalie all the time. You know, yeah, you I, are. I like my defenseman <laughs> too. Yeah, bit. you are. <laughs> a little bit. Uh, you know, Aristo to me, uh, I've always liked a big defenseman who plays hard, uh, is physical. Um, you need those guys on your team. And I, I know at times, I, I think Risto's been a, a polarizing player here in Philadelphia. But when slotted in the right spot, he can do a really good job for you. And he was asked to do more tonight. And I thought he did a great job playing with Cam York, allowed Cam to be a little bit more aggressive early on, uh, mostly in the first period and trying to generate some offense. But he was a security blanket back there. I thought he played hard, was physical when he had to be, um, made some strong plays. And, and, and as I said, I mean, if you don't have those guys that can play those hard minutes, uh, sometimes that time in your own zone, those pucks can end up in the back of your net. And I thought he did a great job tonight, JJ. You just had that feeling, Bush, when the puck's in the defensive zone and he's going over over there that he's going to end up with that puck. He's yeah. just really strong on the puck. But let's give a shout out here to Brad Shaw. When you think about this Flyers defense score, I mean, what defenseman isn't playing above what we expected? Just about all of them are. I mean, you go Sealer, you go Walker, Sanheim when he's healthy, Cam, you're right down the line, and Risto is just part of that that group, and Bradshaw works with the defense. So I think he deserves some some real a real tribute here, and John Tortorella will be the first person to say he does because he's done great work with that core. Yeah, I think for me, if you look through it, the past eight games or whatever, the, the lack of mistakes is really, really impressive to me. Not just the defensemen, but turnovers late in games, which we'd, every team you see, you see through a season, but the Flyers had some problems with it the last couple of seasons. It looks to me like a team that really is uh, taken to the coaching and listening and mentally tough, tougher than I thought because of the lack of mistakes right now. You know, Al, I think I agree with you. Certainly better with the puck in terms of puck management than last year. But when they do turn it over, what I'm most impressed with is how they recover, whether it be the forwards, the defense, or whatever. They recover, and they do so with such desperation that that really obviously can eliminate the original mistake. And, and when they can't do it, the goaltenders have been eliminating the mistakes. So it, it all works out. You're absolutely right. I mean, uh, <laughs> mistakes are going to happen in the game, and you've got to find a way to not get rattled by it. I think what we're seeing now in this group is – uh, a confidence that's growing in them, right? Uh, yeah, they can play with the lead. They've proven they can battle back now in a couple of games when they fall behind. But to me, this was an impressive win because you had the lead early on in the game and you hung on to it the whole way through. Good teams find ways to win these games. Teams that have fragile confidence, they find ways to, to cough it up and lose the game. Again, the penalty kill has been terrific. I mean, you can't say enough about it and what it's done for this team. You take penalties and you give up power play goals. Uh, those are the ones that kill confidence. The Flyers just continue to do a great job, and now it's bleeding over into their five-on-five -five play and being able to protect leads and, and play with that lead. I, I just think this team is playing with a lot of confidence right now. they got to keep their foot on the gas here. I mean, sure. there's three games before uh, the Christmas break. It's important that they finish strong and feel good about it and have a nice little break. Yeah, and you got the Devils next, so shouldn't have any trouble getting up for that right. game. And should remember, this is the second highest scoring team in the NHL that they just shut out. I know missing Larkin and and Perron and, and some key players, but the bottom line is the Flyers are missing, you know, their top defenseman in terms of minutes played. So you cancel all that out. I mean, you shut out the Red Wings. That's that's a, that's a feather in your cap. Absolutely impressive stuff. A big one for the Flyers. Thank you so much, JJ and Bush. We'll talk to you Tuesday in New Jersey. Stay with us here. Post Game Live presented by Curado Insurance. The Flyers win it one to nothing here in Philadelphia. Going to talk about Cam York's play. We're going to hear from Cam York in the locker room. Stay with us. Flyers Post Game Live is presented by Cure Auto Insurance. See how much you can save at Cure.com.